Hold on, don't skip ahead. Today's video is filled with astonishing revelations and cosmic insights that you absolutely can't miss. We've just uncovered an incredible story about how the Divine Realm intervened with a powerful and unmistakable warning. Someone out there overlooked these celestial signals and learned a lesson they will never forget. As we delve into this remarkable tale, you'll witness how the universe's guidance is not merely a whisper but a loud and clear message, one that protects and shields those who pay attention to its call. Get ready for a thrilling ride of insights as we uncover how these divine warnings came to light and why you are under the watchful protection of your guardian angels. So, get ready and stay with us, because what you're about to uncover will not only amaze you but also reaffirm the incredible strength of divine protection in our lives. Don't go anywhere, we've drawn the Ten of Swords, which indicates that some of you may be facing betrayal or feeling deeply hurt by someone. This might involve a situation where you feel backstabbed or disappointed by someone who acted with harmful intentions. Even if they believed their actions were justified, the message coming through is powerful. Your angels have cautioned this person to cease their actions against you. It appears that someone has made an effort to cause you pain or betray you, and while I typically focus on uplifting messages, this one was essential to share. Individuals who vibrate at a higher frequency and are committed to personal growth often encounter challenges from those who feel threatened or unable to relate to their success. The Page of Pentacles suggests that someone may have been watching you or attempting to get close with ulterior motives. This could be a friend or a romantic interest looking to benefit from your presence or exploit the situation. The Reverse Justice card implies that this person acted unfairly or unjustly. While you likely had the best intentions, you've probably sensed that their behavior wasn't equitable. The Moon card suggests there may be hidden actions or motives at play, which your intuition has likely picked up on. Combined with the Reverse Star and the King of Wands, it's evident that this person may have been dishonest or manipulative. For many of you, this situation involves someone who got rattled because their intentions weren't sincere. They may have tried to deceive you or exploit you for their own benefit. Your angels intervened, sending a clear message to this individual to cease their behavior. Some people, particularly those involved in spiritual practices, might believe they can act with negative intentions without facing repercussions, but that is not the case. You've always concentrated on personal growth without bringing others down, while this person may have thought they needed to use you to elevate themselves. If you felt that someone was a friend or someone you could trust but your intuition warned you otherwise, you were right. This individual may have been involved in circumstances where their intentions weren't pure. Your angels are highlighting this today because this person might now regret their actions and wish they could take back their mistakes. This person may have acted out of arrogance or misunderstanding, and now they might even want to reach out to you. However, it seems your angels have intervened, guiding them to step back and leave you alone. You may not realize it, but when someone wrongs you, your angels often handle the situation behind the scenes. This could be why this person seems to be avoiding you or acting fearful. It's not because of anything you did, but because your angels have stepped in. Some of you may be seeking justice or feeling that you've been treated unfairly. Often, your angels wait for you to step away or for the situation to naturally unfold before they deliver the karma to those involved. If you haven't seen this play out yet, you may soon hear about this person facing the consequences of their actions. They are beginning to understand that their behavior has led to significant repercussions. Interestingly, some of these individuals, who may not have been spiritual before, could start to believe in spiritual principles after experiencing the effect of their karma. They may now realize they crossed a line by trying to mess with you. People often mistake your kindness for naivety, but you're far from being easily fooled. Once you uncover someone's true intentions, you have a way of shifting the dynamics of the relationship. It seems this person may have been unhappy with their own life and viewed you as a source of inspiration or a way to improve their situation. They might have tried to take advantage, thinking you could help or save them. However, once they realized they couldn't manipulate or control you, their behavior likely changed, or they may have disappeared altogether. For some, this might have been a romantic situation where the person ghosted you after realizing they couldn't get what they wanted. Your angels, always protective, issued a clear warning to this person to stay away from you. Your intuition probably clued you in on their true nature, 
and you may have already distanced yourself. This person likely thought their misfortune was just bad luck, but now they're starting to understand that their negative experiences are a direct consequence of how they treated you. They may not have realized they were the root cause of the drama or toxicity. For some, this could have been an ex who repeatedly caused you pain and eventually vanished from your life. Your angels decided that enough was enough, and their immature behavior would no longer be allowed to affect you. This person may have interfered with various aspects of your life, such as your career or relationships, possibly driven by jealousy of your positive transformation. If they're not trying to reconnect or stay in touch, it's because they're fully aware of their mistakes. Your angels, along with your intuition, have steered you away from this negativity, and now this person is facing the consequences of their actions. Karma is catching up with those who wronged you, but it's important to remain detached and not feel satisfaction from their downfall. Some of you may already sense that this person has been gossiping about you or speaking ill behind your back. Rest assured, your angels are fiercely protective, and they won't tolerate any unfair treatment. You might not always see the immediate effects of karma, but you could start to notice moments where their misfortune, like a flat tire or financial difficulties, coincides with the way they treated you. Sometimes, the challenges people face are direct consequences of their behavior toward others, and this may become more obvious as they encounter setbacks. You may have stopped helping or rescuing this person because you realize their issues were often self-inflicted or due to their irresponsibility. By stepping back and no longer offering your support, you're ensuring that you aren't pulled down by their problems. This reflects the idea of not letting others take advantage of your kindness or use it to bring you down. It's similar to a scene from The Lion King where Scar tries to drag Simba down, symbolizing how some people seek help but only to pull you into their chaos. As someone who is spiritually elevated and well-meaning, others might not fully grasp or appreciate your goodness and could attempt to exploit it for their own gain. Your angels are vigilant in protecting you from individuals like this. When people enter your life seeming to need help, it's crucial to discern their true motives. Often, those who show a lot of interest or admiration may be more focused on using or studying you for their own gain rather than offering genuine support. This person may have exhibited superficial traits or struggled with issues like financial irresponsibility or bad habits, which influence their behavior toward you. Their obsession with you could be rooted in dissatisfaction with their own life, and they may have tried to pull you into their negativity. Some of you might have recently experienced this person attempting to apologize or make amends, realizing their mistakes. However, your angels may be encouraging you to move on and not re-engage with them. The best outcome could be for this individual to leave your life for good. While they might mistakenly blame their current troubles on your energy, their misfortunes are actually a direct result of their own actions, not yours. Your decision to withdraw support and set healthy boundaries is a powerful and positive step. As lightworkers and healers, you have the right to choose who to help and when it's necessary to step back. You are not obligated to give endlessly, especially when your energy is being taken advantage of or when others try to make you feel guilty for protecting yourself. By prioritizing your own energy and focusing on your growth and success, you'll notice that things start to align in your favor whether in career, love, or personal development. It seems you've been dealing with someone who initially seemed trustworthy but later revealed themselves to be highly competitive and manipulative. At first, their competitive nature may have seemed like a minor flaw, but it soon became clear that their loyalty was more self-serving. What appeared as friendly competition was actually a cover for manipulation. This person may have initially come across as a positive influence, but over time, their true intentions surfaced. Even their so-called advice may have been misleading or harmful, disguised as helpful guidance. They may have secretly envied your success while pretending to be supportive, masking their resentment. You might have noticed that this person was obsessed with staying close to you, perhaps even admiring you outwardly. However, their admiration was overshadowed by jealousy and competitiveness. They may have hoped to benefit from your success or subtly undermine it. As you started to distance yourself, their negative behavior likely intensified, revealing their true intentions. They might have tried to turn others against you or create obstacles in your life, but their efforts backfired. Those they attempted to manipulate saw through their actions and ended up supporting you instead. 
It's clear their actions were driven by jealousy and insecurity. They may have tried to make you feel inferior or sabotage your progress because they couldn't handle your success or their own inadequacies. In the end, their attempts to harm you only brought consequences upon themselves. In the end, their manipulative tactics failed, and they are now facing the consequences of their actions. This person is likely feeling the weight of their own karma, realizing that their negativity has only brought more negativity into their life. You've probably learned to safeguard your energy and distance yourself from individuals who don't genuinely support you. Your ability to see through their facade and uphold your boundaries highlights your growth and self-awareness. As you stay focused on yourself and your goals, you're moving away from negative influences and toward more authentic, supportive relationships. You're embodying the qualities of the King of Swords, assertive, clear-minded, and unafraid to make difficult decisions for your well-being. This newfound clarity and strength will continue to help you thrive and keep toxic influences at bay. It's remarkable how some people can be so manipulative, engaging in deceitful behavior like lying, cheating, or stealing, while convincing themselves they're justified. It's unsettling to grasp how deeply misguided people can be, but it's an unfortunate reality. You may be dealing with the pain of betrayal from someone who once seemed trustworthy but ultimately proved to be manipulative and self-serving. As you heal and move forward, it's clear that this person will face serious consequences for their actions. They've received a strong message that their behavior towards you was unacceptable, and it's only a matter of time before they face the repercussions. While they may try to quietly walk away as if nothing happened, they won't be able to escape the consequences. An apology might be on the horizon, but it could feel insincere or insufficient. Remember, you're under no obligation to accept it if you don't want to. After everything you've been through, you have every right to protect your peace and distance yourself from those who have caused harm. This person might have misunderstood you or found you mysterious because you tend to keep to yourself, and their negativity could have been a reaction to your independence and self-assurance. While you've been generous and kind, it's perfectly acceptable to pull back and safeguard your energy when someone is draining you. If there are any legal matters involved, things should likely turn out in your favor. You're thriving and glowing, even after facing challenges. The divine protection surrounding you is incredibly strong, and any negative intentions this person had are likely backfiring. They might even be experiencing vivid dreams or signs, realizing they've crossed the wrong person. You've chosen to move on, focusing on your growth and success, and it's clear you're better off without them. Their attempts to undermine or create obstacles for you are only exposing their own shortcomings. By releasing negativity and detaching from harmful influences, you're making space for better opportunities and positive relationships. You're on a path to greater success and fulfillment, attracting the right people into your life. As you continue to heal and move forward, you'll find yourself surrounded by more supportive and genuine connections. Your focus is paying off, making you stronger and wiser from these experiences. It's unfortunate to see how some people, despite their charm, can be deeply manipulative and driven by jealousy. They may try to bring you down, especially when they perceive your kindness, sweetness, and generosity as a threat. However, don't let their actions or manipulations cause you to doubt your worth. You are genuine and kind, and their behavior stems from their own issues rather than any shortcomings on your part. Many individuals remain stuck in negative patterns and avoid self-reflection, choosing instead to blame others or act out of ego. For them, it's often easier to project their flaws onto someone else than to confront their own shortcomings. If you're focused on personal growth and self-development, you might find it hard to understand why others resist change or act destructively. Your intelligence and respect for others can intimidate some, but this only highlights your strength and presence. You've probably noticed that certain individuals struggle with your powerful energy, and this person is no exception. They may have initially recognized your strength but realized too late that their actions were harmful. While this person may be feeling the burden of their karma or attempting to manipulate you into believing you're the problem, the reality is that their negative intentions will ultimately backfire. Any efforts to bring you down or cause you harm are likely to lead to their own downfall. The positive news is that your success and growth will continue, and you may even receive messages of good fortune as a result of overcoming this negativity. 
Thanks to the protection from your angels, any negative energy directed at you is likely to miss its mark. Your resilience in turning challenges into opportunities is a testament to your strength. As you continue to grow, you'll naturally repel negative energies while drawing in divine blessings that others cannot replicate. Those who seek to take from you will face spiritual barriers, as God's tests reveal people's true intentions on your journey. Better opportunities await, so keep embracing love and collaboration, even if not everyone acts with integrity. While someone may play the victim, their actions have led to their own downfall, and your angels are amused by their attempts to undermine you. Despite the stress this situation may cause, trust that it will resolve soon, allowing you to shine even brighter. This interaction could be a karmic lesson for them, serving as a learning experience while you continue to achieve your goals. While some may not grasp their lessons in this lifetime, being around you serves as a vital trigger for their growth. Your angels protect you because you are genuine and favored, guiding you to confront negative energies when necessary. Celebrate your successes quietly, especially among those who may be envious or who don't have your best interests at heart. Remember, it's not your responsibility to cater to those seeking to benefit from your success without contributing. Those who react negatively to your honesty reflect their own insecurities. Instead of focusing on them, keep moving forward toward your goals. Challenges are pushing you closer to your destiny, and the person who clings to you only complicates their own situation. While they may not be inherently bad, they struggle with self-awareness and growth. Your angels are guiding you to distance yourself from negativity, allowing you to gain clarity and empowerment. This pivotal moment emphasizes your need to focus on what aligns with you. As you heal and grow, your silent efforts may go unnoticed by others, who may try to imitate your success without understanding the hard work behind it. Jealousy often underlies their behavior, as they confront their own mistakes. By setting boundaries and protecting yourself, you demonstrate self-respect and tough love. Celebrate your successes privately when needed, as you enter a period of stability and improvement in all aspects of life. Trust that your angels will shield you from those who attempt to bring you down, and continue to focus on your unique journey. Your hard work, self-love, and connection to your angels will attract the right people and opportunities. In summary, your angels are watching over you, ensuring you remain shielded from negativity, while karma takes care of those who have wronged you. Keep shining and stay true to yourself as you continue to grow. Imagine if you were assured that whatever you did for God's glory would succeed, what would you undertake? Once you identify what that might be, the crucial question then becomes, why aren't you already pursuing it? Fear is often the greatest obstacle, and the Bible frequently reminds us to fear not. Fear can prevent us from following God's calling. To truly grow, we must confront our fears. So, do you value personal growth enough to face your fears, or are you letting your fear of failure keep you from moving forward, even if it means remaining stagnant? Growth inherently involves risk, and risk brings fear. The choice is clear, confront your fear or avoid it and remain passive and stagnant. Often, we seek reassurance and a guarantee that everything will be alright before taking a leap, but God rarely provides that guarantee up front. True growth occurs when we are willing to take a step of faith without certainty. It's about trusting God and moving forward despite the uncertainty. To grow, you must push beyond your comfort zone. The fears you avoid become your boundaries. Think of fear as an invitation to evolve, to expand beyond your current limitations. It's a call to explore new possibilities and to grow in ways you haven't yet experienced. The Holy Spirit is most active when you step outside your familiar zone. You need to confront your fears now, rather than postponing them with promises of, someday, that never seem to materialize. Anything you're hesitant about or reluctant to do often gets deferred indefinitely, but it's essential to act today. God is telling us, you won't live forever. This means that real growth happens at the edge of your comfort zone. I firmly believe that growth always begins where your comfort ends, there's no convincing me otherwise. Every Sunday, I still feel uneasy standing up here, but I push through because growth and faith often lie beyond our comfort zones. Many people, driven by fear, busily stick to what's comfortable to avoid stepping out in faith. So, what would you undertake for God's glory if you knew it would succeed? 
The only way to find out is to take the leap. When you sense God calling you to something, the only way to confirm it is to act. Naturally, it must align with his word and it helps to seek counsel from fellow believers if you have doubts. But if you find yourself asking, what if it doesn't work, consider this, what if it does? When I was a teenager at camp, I remember standing at the back of the worship service when Coach Bully told me, boy, when the singing is over, I want you to preach. I was stunned. Preach? In 45 seconds? I asked. Yep, he replied. I told him, Coach, I've only been a Christian for a couple of years and I'm not comfortable speaking in front of people. He retorted, Comfortable? Did you think Daniel was comfortable in the lion's den? Or Paul and Silas in prison? Or Jesus on the cross? What should I talk about? I asked. Coach Lee simply said, Talk about Jesus. Talk about John 3 verse 16. Go. So, I did. I preached a sermon on John 3 verse 16, and a lot of kids came to faith. As I left the platform, Coach Lee pointed at me and said, When you teach the Bible, I see two things, you come alive, and they come alive. Then I had to sit down with my dad, who wasn't a believer at the time, and tell him I wasn't going to medical school, I was going to seminary. He asked, What seminary? I explained, It's preacher school. His response was, Preacher school? You only work half a day a week and study one book. Why do you need a whole school for that? I shrugged and said, I don't know. They make you go. And I went ahead and did it. If you place your trust not in your circumstances, because honestly, who knows how things will turn out, but in him, that's what truly matters. We can't predict the future, right now, we only see things dimly. So how do you figure out what he wants you to do? My approach to understanding God's call is simple, pray, make your best guess, and take action. Pray, guess, and go. When making that guess, it's crucial to stay grounded in God's word and surrounded by his people. Follow what he tells you. In John chapter 3, Jesus compares following God's will to the wind. You can't see the wind itself, only its effects. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. You can feel it and observe how it changes things, but you never actually see the wind. It's only when you set sail and let the wind guide you that you experience its power and direction. If you could accomplish anything for the glory of God with the certainty of success, what would it be? Once you have an idea, don't just listen to the word but put it into action. It's time to move beyond merely hearing and start doing. I frequently remind people, especially the younger generation, which growth doesn't happen in comfort, it happens when we're stretched and challenged. Today, I believe this message is for me as well, God is pushing us out of our comfort zones. Scientists and psychologists agree that remaining in comfort zones stifles growth in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. For example, when an eaglet is developing, the parent eagle removes feathers from the nest to make the eaglet uncomfortable, encouraging it to spread its wings and learn to fly. Similarly, God uses discomfort in our lives to teach us to soar. Growth starts at the edge of your comfort zone. You need to let go of your comfort and be willing to step into the unknown. Success often comes from venturing into discomfort, so embrace the challenge of being uncomfortable. God's call isn't about staying in the familiar, it's about taking bold steps of faith. While he doesn't promise comfort, he does promise the strength to be courageous. Today, I'm here to urge you to step out of your comfort zone, the boat of comfort. God is calling you to move beyond your familiar boundaries. He wants to stretch you, help you grow, and push you to achieve more than you think possible. For some of you, God has given you a vision or dream, perhaps years or even decades ago, but you're still clinging to the safety of the boat because it's comfortable. Remember, God doesn't call you without also equipping you with the courage to act. It's time to leave the boat behind and pursue that dream. Just like Peter stepped out of the boat and began walking on water, you too need to take that first step. Some of you might be waiting for God to part the sea before you make your move, but God is saying, step out, and I will part the sea. 
Faith involves setting bold goals and trusting in a limitless God. It's about committing fully and believing that God is working behind the scenes to make things happen. We're not here to play it safe, we're here to take risks. I've always been drawn to adventures, and I encourage you to ask God for a bold vision, a dream of how you can align your life with His plan to make a significant impact in the world for His glory. Then, go after that dream with everything you've got and witness the results. It's easy to settle into a comfortable life with things that fall short of God's best for us. We know there's more potential within us, but we often hesitate to stretch ourselves or take risks. We worry about what might go wrong. What if the door doesn't open or the plan fails? We can become complacent with negative influences, unhealthy habits, or feelings of self-pity, always focusing on what we've missed or how we're disadvantaged. The danger of staying in our comfort zone is that we miss out on our true destiny. When God is calling you to a higher purpose, there will be a choice to make, comfort or calling? Will you stay where you are, avoiding challenges, discipline, and fear, or will you step out in faith, take a risk, and embrace the call? The decision is yours. If you're never stepping out of your comfort zone, you're not truly growing. Growth requires stretching your faith and pushing beyond your limits. The enemy will always try to convince you of what you can't do, but if you ignore those lies, you'll hear a quiet, encouraging voice that tells you what you can achieve. You might wonder, what if I try and fail? But consider this, what if you try and succeed? What if taking that step of faith elevates you to a new level and reveals abilities you never knew you had? What if you discover you can do things you've never done before, walk in freedom, lead with confidence, live a fulfilled life? Don't let the what-ifs discourage you from pursuing your destiny. Instead, flip them around. What if God's favor is upon you? What if unexpected opportunities arise? What if you overcome long-standing challenges? The key is to try because if you don't, you'll never know what's possible. Playing it safe offers no rewards. As Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Many of you have the potential to be used in incredible ways, but you hesitate to take the risk. Here's a practical challenge from this parable. Without taking risks for God, there are no rewards from Him. The best things in life come when you step out in faith and embrace the risk of trusting Him. God's greatest works in your life often happen in those moments when you say, I'm terrified to trust you with this, but I'm choosing to step out in faith anyway. If you're never willing to take risks, you won't accomplish much in this world. So rise up, take that risk, make that leap, and take action today. Don't let another day pass without moving forward. We aren't here just to read about others living adventurous lives, we're called to live them ourselves. Think about the irony of our lives, we become content with routines, binge-watch TV shows about other people's lives, or play video games about adventures while staying stuck in our own safe zones. We scroll through social media, looking at others' lives instead of living our own. We're meant for adventure, but to embrace the adventure God has for us, we need to shift from routine to risk. Routine can easily become a rut, a series of actions done day in and day out without questioning their purpose or impact. As you approach the end of your life, Consider whether you've truly lived the life you were meant to, made the difference you were called to make, and fulfilled your true purpose. We often find ourselves stuck in ruts. When we stay in a routine long enough, it creates a rut, and if we remain in that rut too long, it can become a grave. Many people spend their lives trapped in this mundane cycle, simply existing rather than truly living. But Jesus tells us in John 10 verse 10 that he came to give us life in abundance, not a monotonous, predictable existence. So many of us are conditioned to stay safe, to avoid excitement, and to believe that we should not expect too much. This mindset often seeps into our faith, leading us to think, don't expect too much from God. Just stay safe and stick to the status quo. But living in fear and clinging to the safety of our controlled little world prevents us from stepping into the purpose God has for our lives. Faith requires risk. It means doing things we cannot accomplish on our own, things that require God's intervention. The enemy knows that if he can't take our souls, he can at least make us live safe, keeping us from stepping out in faith and fulfilling God's call on our lives. 
The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. If we want to please God, we need to embrace a life of risk and faith. To move forward, we must step out of our comfort zones and stop being content with just reading about other people's adventures. There's a story God wants you to live. What should truly scare us is not taking risks but the regret of reaching the end of our lives and realizing we never stepped out to do what God called us to do. The fear of missing out on our divine purpose and living a life of regret should be our greatest concern. Imagine you're walking through a dense fog where your vision is limited and every step is an act of trust. This is much like our walk with God, a journey through the unknown, relying solely on His guidance and not our limited perception. Today, I will share with you profound insights into walking by faith and not by sight or emotions. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus, so watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My friends in this world, we are often tempted to rely on what we can see and feel. Yet, let us embrace the wisdom of Hebrews 11 verse 1, which declares, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This profound truth anchors us in the midst of life's ever-changing tides. It calls us to place our trust in God's plan, even when it stretches beyond our understanding or visible horizon. Let us walk in faith, irrespective of the shifting sands of our circumstances and feelings. As we journey together, we will explore seven key insights that will help us navigate this path of faith. These insights will deepen our trust in the Lord and guide us in aligning our steps with His divine will. Number one, walking by faith, not your emotions. Life often presents us with a roller coaster of emotions, and you know what? But our emotions can be misleading, taking us on a path that deviates from God's plan. The story of Elijah in 1 Kings 19 offers a powerful lesson on this. After a significant victory at Mount Carmel, Elijah plunged into despair and fear due to Jezebel's threats. Despite having just witnessed God's mighty power, his emotions in that moment overshadowed his faith. This reminds us that even the strongest among us can falter if we lean too heavily on our emotional responses. My friends, in moments of emotional turmoil, let us hold on to the truth found in Psalm 56 verse 3, which says, Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. This scripture not only addresses our fears, but also our broader emotional responses. It teaches us that our faith should not be swayed by the ever-changing tides of our emotions. Instead, we are called to place our trust and decisions in the steadfast love of God, not in the temporary whispers of our feelings. Walking by faith and not by emotions requires us to cultivate a deep sense of discernment and reliance on the Holy Spirit. It means that in moments of fear, anxiety, or even overwhelming joy, we pause and align these feelings with God's Word. It's about understanding that emotions are part of our human experience, but they should not be the compass that guides our decisions or our belief in God's promises. Therefore, as we navigate the challenges of life, let us seek wisdom and guidance from the Holy Spirit. Let us train ourselves to recognize when our emotions are leading us astray and stand in faith. Listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit and turn to prayer and scripture for truth in moments when our emotions threaten to overwhelm our faith. Let us remember Elijah and learn to rise above our immediate feelings, trusting in God's eternal plan and unfailing love. My friends, let us strive to walk by faith, grounded in the truth of God's word, rather than being swayed by the fleeting and often deceptive nature of our emotions. In doing so, we find stability and clarity anchored in the love and wisdom of our Heavenly Father. Number two, trusting in God's timing over our own. The concept of time often perplexes us. We live in a world that revolves around schedules, deadlines, and immediate gratification. This fast-paced life can sometimes make the virtue of patience seem like a forgotten relic. Yet, in the realm of faith, time takes on a different dimension. As we ponder on the story of Noah, we see a man who operated not on conventional time, but on God's time. Building an ark with no cloud in the sky, Noah's faith was not rooted in what he could see or understand. It was anchored in the promises of God. In this context, 
Isaiah 55 verse 8 echoes profoundly. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. This verse isn't just about God's higher thinking, but also about his perfect timing. Noah's steadfast obedience to a task that appeared illogical on the surface teaches us an invaluable lesson about the true nature of unwavering faith. Our journey is often marred by our impatience and our lack of trust in God's timing. We want things to happen now, forgetting that God's timeline is always perfect, even when it seems delayed by our standards. Trusting in God's timing means embracing a season of waiting. It involves understanding that our immediate desires may not align with God's ultimate plan for us. This waiting is not passive, it's an active, faithful anticipation. It's about preparing our hearts, nurturing our faith, and staying committed to God's course, even when the horizon seems distant. Noah's faithfulness during his season of waiting, building an ark amidst doubt and ridicule, is a testament to the strength that comes from trusting in God's timing. Therefore, as we navigate through our lives, let us seek to embody Noah's unwavering faith. When faced with decisions, big or small, let us pause and consider God's timing. This perspective shift is not about inaction. It's about aligning our actions with God's divine schedule. In moments of impatience and uncertainty, let us recall Noah's Ark, a symbol of trust and obedience in God's perfect timing. God guiding us to a deeper understanding of faith. Number three, surrendering personal ambitions to divine will. At times, our personal ambitions and dreams seem to chart our course. Yet, God's plan calls us to a different path. The story of Jonah vividly illustrates this struggle. Jonah was called to go to Nineveh, a task he initially ran from because it conflicted with his personal desires and prejudices. His journey, including the extraordinary experience inside the belly of a great fish, symbolizes the internal conflict we face when our plans clash with God's. As we reflect on Jonah's story, we are reminded of Proverbs 19 verse 21. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. This verse teaches us about the supremacy of God's will over our own ambitions. Jonah's eventual decision to obey God despite his initial reluctance demonstrates the importance of surrendering our plans to God, trusting that his plans are not only different but better. Surrendering to God's will often mean stepping outside our comfort zones and confronting our deepest fears and prejudices. For Jonah, going to Nineveh was not just about a physical journey, but also a spiritual transformation. This act of surrender is not a sign of weakness, but of profound strength and faith, acknowledging that our personal ambitions must align with God's higher purpose. Therefore, in our lives, when we find our ambitions clashing with God's call, let us remember Jonah's journey. It's a call to introspection and realignment, a reminder that our ultimate purpose is found not in the pursuit of our ambitions, but in aligning them with God's divine plan. Surrendering doesn't mean giving up on our dreams. It means reshaping them to fit into the grand narrative God has written for us. Number four, overcoming doubts with God's assurance. Doubts are a natural part of our faith journey. They challenge our beliefs and can lead to spiritual growth if navigated wisely. The story of Thomas, often labeled as Doubting Thomas, offers a unique perspective on this. After the resurrection of Jesus, Thomas struggled with doubt unable to believe without seeing Jesus with his own eyes. His story is a reflection of our own moments of doubt, where we see tangible proof of God's presence and plan. In these moments, Jesus' words to Thomas resonate deeply, as recorded in John 20 verse 29, where he said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This verse is not just a rebuke of doubt, but an invitation to a deeper faith, a faith that believes in God's plan even when it's not visibly evident. Thomas's eventual declaration of faith upon seeing Jesus reminds us that our doubts, when surrendered to God, can lead to a stronger conviction in his plan for us. Overcoming doubt requires an intentional cultivation of faith and trust in God. It involves seeking him through his word, prayer, and the fellowship of believers. Thomas's story teaches us that it's okay to have questions or uncertainties, but we should not let them distance us from God. Instead, we should bring them to Him, 
allowing his truth to guide and reassure us. As we face our doubts, let's be encouraged by Thomas's journey from skepticism to faith. Let us embrace our doubts not as hindrances, but as stepping stones to a deeper understanding and trust in God's plan. In our quest for answers, let us remain open to the ways God reveals His will and purpose for our lives. Number 5. Embracing Transformation Through God's Guidance Personal transformation is often a key aspect of aligning with God's plan. The transformation of Saul to Paul is one of the most striking examples of this. Saul, initially a persecutor of Christians, experienced a radical transformation on the road to Damascus. This was not just a change of heart, but a complete redirection of his life's purpose. Guided by God's hand, Paul's transformation, as he later became known, was marked by a total surrender to God's will. As he states in Galatians 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. This profound declaration highlights the essence of embracing God's plan. It's about letting go of our old selves and allowing God to reshape our identity and purpose according to His divine will. Embracing transformation through God's guidance requires humility and a willingness to let go of our former ways. For Paul, this meant abandoning his previous beliefs and practices to fully embrace the teachings of Christ. This kind of transformation can be challenging as it often requires us to step into unfamiliar territory and adopt new ways of thinking and living. Therefore, as we seek to align with God's plan, let us be open to the transformative work He wants to do in us. Like Paul, let us be willing to undergo the changes that come with following Christ. This transformation is not a loss of self, but a discovery of our true identity and purpose in God. It's a journey from who we are to who God intends us to be. Number 6. Persevering in Faith Despite Challenges The journey of faith is often marked by challenges and trials. These moments test our perseverance and commitment to God's plan. The story of the prophet Hosea is a profound example of unwavering faith amidst adversity. Hosea was called to marry an unfaithful woman, Gomer, as a symbol of God's love for an unfaithful Israel. This difficult path was not a reflection of personal failure, but a profound illustration of God's unwavering commitment and love. Hosea's life reminds us of James 1 verse 12, which says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. This verse highlights the virtue of perseverance. Enduring challenges in our faith journey is not about silently bearing pain, but also about remaining steadfast in our trust in God's plan. Even when it leads us through difficult and incomprehensible paths, persevering in faith requires us to look beyond our current struggles and focus on the greater purpose that God has for us. Hosea's unwavering commitment to God, despite the pain and humiliation he endured, serves as a powerful testament to the strength that comes from divine assurance. It's about understanding that our trials are not just obstacles, but opportunities for growth and deeper reliance on God. As we face our own challenges, let us draw inspiration from Hosea's perseverance. Let us remember that our trials are temporary, but the lessons and strength we gain from them have eternal significance. In times of hardship, let us cling to the promise of the crown of life, persevering in faith and trusting in the unfailing love and plan of God. Number 7. Walking in Faith, Not by Sight The essence of walking by faith is beautifully captured in the life of Abraham. Called to leave his homeland and go to an unknown land, Abraham's journey was marked by faith in God's promises, even when they seemed distant and unattainable. He believed in God's promise of a son despite his and Sarah's old age and was willing to sacrifice his promised son, Isaac, trusting in God's plan above his understanding. Abraham's life resonates with 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. This principle defines our Christian walk, a journey based not on visible evidence but on the assurance of God's promises. Abraham's willingness to step into the unknown Trusting in God's word sets a powerful example for us. Walking by faith, not by sight, means trusting in God's promises even when they defy our logic or timelines. 
It involves letting go of our need for visible proof and relying on the certainty of God's word. Abraham's journey, filled with ups and downs, was a testament to the fact that faith is not a straight path, but a series of steps taken in trust and obedience. Therefore, as we walk our own journey of faith, let us be inspired by Abraham's example. Let us embrace the uncertainties and challenges with faith, knowing that our sight is limited but God's vision is infinite. In every step, in every decision, let us walk by faith, holding on to the promises of God, assured that His plan for us is perfect and His timing is impeccable. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, you are mighty and majestic. Your glory fills the heavens and the earth. You are the rock of ages, the great I am, the one who is, who is, and who is to come. Your wisdom is unsearchable, and your power is like no other. In your presence, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that you are Lord. I lift your name on high, for you are worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. I thank you, Father, for your manifold blessings in my life and in the lives of my loved ones. Thank you for your unfailing love, your boundless grace, and your merciful kindness that greets me each morning. Your faithfulness is my shield and buckler. Thank you for being my guide, my comforter, and my steadfast hope in times of uncertainty. Forgive me, Lord, for the times I have leaned on my understanding, for moments when my faith faltered and I walked by sight. I ask for your forgiveness, cleanse my heart from all unrighteousness. I also forgive those who have wronged me, releasing all resentment and hurt. For in forgiveness, there is freedom and peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that I am walking by faith and not by sight. I rebuke every spirit of doubt, fear, and confusion. I bind any influence that contradicts your will for my life, and I ask for wisdom, clarity, and discernment. Lord, I trust in your unfailing provision. You are my provider and I hold on to your promise to supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Give me this day my daily bread and my daily benefits. Heavenly Father, I pray that your hand of healing reaches out to touch me and my loved ones, bringing restoration and wholeness in every area where we need your divine healing. I pray against every attack of the enemy, be it on our health, our minds, or our spirits. Protect us, Lord, from all harm and keep us under the shadow of your wings. Deliver us from all evil and lead us away from temptation. Lord, I pray for your blessings upon my life and the lives of my loved ones. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We stand in agreement, united in our desire to follow your plan and purpose for our lives. Guide us, Lord, as we navigate through life's challenges and decisions. Help us to embrace your will, overcome our doubts, and find joy and fulfillment in your divine plan. Lord, pour out your Spirit upon us. Fill us with the courage and strength to face whatever lies ahead. May we, like Abraham, trust in your promises, even when they seem distant. Help us to persevere through trials, knowing that you are refining us for a greater purpose. May our lives be a testament to your faithfulness and love. In the name of Jesus, we declare that we walk by faith, not by sight or our emotions. We declare that everything is working for us and not against us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Let your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Imagine embarking on a journey through an unknown landscape where each step forward is an act of faith and each breath a whisper of hope. This journey is not marked by the visible challenges of towering peaks or vast oceans, but by the internal battles that we face. It is marked by the moments of doubt, fear, and uncertainty that cloud our path. Yet, it is in these very moments that a profound truth emerges, a beacon of hope in the darkness. God is for us. He is the compass that guides us, the light that illuminates our path, and the strength that carries us forward. 
Today, we will delve into understanding how to find strength in the Lord and be assured that He will never fail us. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. In Isaiah 41 verse 10, we find a promise that anchors us. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This verse is not just a comforting thought. It is the very essence of God's promise to us, an assurance that no matter the journey, we are never alone. Together, we will discover the means to navigate life's uncertainties, fortified by the knowledge that God's presence is ever with us. Now, as we journey through life, we often encounter terrains that test our faith and resolve. These moments filled with uncertainty can make us feel as though we are journeying through a thick fog, each step uncertain, each decision filled with the potential for misstep or the risk of error. Yet, it is precisely in these moments of vulnerability that God's promise to be with us, to guide and strengthen us, becomes most tangible. Life's journey is unpredictable. We face challenges that seem insurmountable, problems that appear unsolvable, and questions that seem unanswerable. It is in these times when the fog of uncertainty surrounds us that the weight of our own weakness becomes most apparent. However, it is also in these times that the strength of God's presence shines brightest. The story of David and Goliath is told in 1 Samuel 17 verse 45 serves as a powerful reminder of this truth. Facing a giant, David declared, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David's confidence did not stem from his own capabilities, but from his faith in God's power. Like David, we are called to face the giants in our lives not with fear, but with the assurance that God is with us, providing the strength we need to overcome. This journey through life, with its highs and lows, is not a journey taken alone, but a shared journey with God as our constant companion. His promise to be with us is not just a reassurance of presence, but an assurance of active support. In moments of weakness, He provides strength. In times of doubt, He offers faith and in periods of turmoil, he grants peace. Philippians 4 verse 13 captures this beautifully. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This verse is a testament to the transformative power of God's strength in our lives, a reminder that regardless of the challenges we face, we possess the capability to overcome them, not through our own might, but through the strength granted to us by Christ. As we navigate the uncertainties of life, let us remember that we do not walk alone. The fog of doubt and fear may at times cloud our path, but the light of God's presence is a constant guide, His word the compass that directs us, and His strength the foundation upon which we can build our resilience. In embracing this journey, let us draw near to God, seeking His guidance and strength in every step. Let us trust in His promise to be with us, to strengthen us, and to uphold us, and as we do so, let us find comfort in the knowledge that no matter the challenges we encounter, we are journeying with the Almighty God who never fails us. Let us now explore the practical implications of God's favor and guidance and how His presence empowers us to face life's adversities with strength and confidence. As we journey through life, it often feels as though we are navigating a vast, uncharted wilderness. The terrain is rough, the paths are unmarked, and the destination seems distant. It's in these moments of uncertainty and struggle that the presence of a guide can make all the difference, a guide who not only knows the way, but also walks with us, offering support, encouragement, and direction. This guide is God, and His promise to be with us is a testament to His unfailing support. Consider the words of Romans 8 verse 31, which boldly declares, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? This verse is not just a rhetorical question. It's a declaration of divine support. It reassures us that with God on our side, the challenges and adversaries that we face lose their power over us. The realization that the Creator of the heavens and the earth is for us should fill our hearts with courage and our steps with confidence. This simple truth changes everything. 
It means that no matter what we face, we are not overwhelmed because our God is bigger than our struggles. Knowing this, we can face anything, understanding that with God, we are always in a position of strength. This reassurance helps us stand firm no matter what comes our way, confident that we are never alone or without help. Now, this assurance of God being for us is not meant to suggest that our journey will be without challenge. Rather, it is a reminder that when we encounter obstacles, we do not face them alone. The battles we fight are fought with God's strength, and the victories we claim are won through His might. Just as a seasoned guide leads a traveler through treacherous terrain, God guides us, offering His wisdom and strength to navigate the complexities of life. The practical application of this truth is seen in our daily lives. When we face decisions that leave us perplexed, God's wisdom is available to guide us. When we encounter situations that threaten to overwhelm us, His strength is sufficient to sustain us. And when we feel isolated or abandoned, His presence is a constant companion, offering comfort and reassurance. But how do we tap into this divine support? The key lies in our relationship with God. Just as communication is vital between a traveler and their guide, so too is our communication with God. Prayer becomes the medium through which we express our fears, our hopes, and our needs. And it is through the study of His Word and the leading of the Holy Spirit that we gain insight into His character, His promises, and His will for our lives. Furthermore, the journey of faith is one that requires trust. Trust in God's timing, trust in His promises, and trust in His character. It is a trust that is built over time through experiences that testify to God's faithfulness and goodness. Each challenge overcome and each need met serves as a milestone in our journey of faith, reinforcing our trust in God and His provision. This journey, though personal, is also shared. As believers, we are part of a community of faith, a family of fellow travelers who share the road with us. This community offers support, encouragement, and accountability reminding us that we are not alone in our journey. It is within this community that we find opportunities to share our stories, to celebrate our victories, and to encourage one another in times of struggle. As we reflect on the assurance that God is for us, let us also consider the response that it calls for from each of us, a response of faith, of trust, and of obedience. The faith that God is who He says He is, the trust that He will do what He has promised, and the obedience to His guidance and commandments. It is through this response that we experience the fullness of God's support and guidance in our lives. Therefore, let us carry with us the assurance that God is indeed for us. Let this truth anchor us in times of uncertainty, strengthen us in times of weakness, and guide us in times of decision. For with God on our side, we have nothing to fear. We really don't. Remember, the devil is a liar. Let us move forward in faith, confident in the knowledge that no matter what we face, we do not face it alone. God is with us, He is for us, and through Him, we are more than conquerors. We will now turn our attention to the transformative power of embracing God's strength in our lives. Throughout the course of our daily lives, we encounter various forms of adversity, moments that test our faith, challenge our resolve, and sometimes threaten to overwhelm us. It's in these moments that the true depth of our reliance on God is revealed. The realization that our strength alone is insufficient is not a cause for despair, but an invitation to lean fully into the strength that God provides. This reliance on divine strength is not a sign of weakness, but a testament to our understanding of where our true power lies. The Apostle Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 10 serve as a profound reminder of this truth. He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This seemingly contradictory statement highlights the core of Christian strength. We do not take pride in our own power, but in God's. Our weaknesses and obstacles turn into opportunities for God's strength and grace to shine through in our lives. Embracing God's strength requires a shift in perspective. 
It means viewing our challenges through the lens of faith, recognizing that with God, no obstacle is insurmountable. This shift doesn't negate the reality of our struggles, but places them in the context of God's greater power and purpose. Again, it's an acknowledgement that our journey through life is not undertaken alone, but in collaboration with the divine, where our efforts are enhanced and completed by God's power. This divine partnership empowers us to approach life's battles with a different mindset. Instead of being overwhelmed by the magnitude of our challenges, we are encouraged by the knowledge that God is with us, fighting for us, and through Him, we have victory. And remember, this doesn't mean we won't face difficulties or that our faith won't be tested. What it does mean is that in the midst of our battles, we have a source of strength that is inexhaustible, a well of courage that never runs dry, and a promise of victory that is certain. Living in the strength that God provides also has a profound impact on how we relate to others. It compels us to move beyond our limitations and to act with compassion, courage, and conviction. As we experience God's strength in our lives, we are motivated to be agents of His love and grace in the world around us. Our battles, once seen as personal struggles, become opportunities to testify to God's power and to offer hope to others facing similar challenges. My friends, let us also consider that our God is unchanging and unfailing in nature. His steadfast love and faithfulness are our constant companions through every season. To truly grasp that He is for us, we must also understand that He will never fail us. And in so doing, we must understand His character. God is not like humans who might make promises only to break them when circumstances change. God's promises are as unshakable as His very nature. When He commits to being by our side, He means it for eternity. This assurance enables us to be confident that He is for us and face the uncertainties and challenges of life with a calm heart and a steady spirit, knowing that regardless of what we encounter, God's support remains unwavering. Living with the knowledge that God will never fail us transforms the way we approach every aspect of our existence. It allows us to take bold steps of faith, to dream big, and to pursue our God-given destinies without fear of abandonment. When we stumble or fall, as we inevitably will, this promise offers us the strength to rise again, dust ourselves off, and continue the journey. It's a reminder that our failures do not define us in the eyes of God. Rather, His unfailing presence is a testament to our inherent worth and potential in Him. Therefore, let us carry forward the assurance that no matter the trials we face or the mountains we must climb, God's presence and support are guaranteed. God is for us. He is with us every step of the way. His promise is as reliable as the dawn. In every moment of doubt, every season of struggle, and every celebration of victory, may we remember this. Our God will never fail us. My friends, let's carry with us the empowering truth that resonates at the heart of our message. God is for you. So be strong in the Lord. He will never fail you. In every step of your journey through the highs and the lows, remember that you are never walking alone. The Lord stands beside you as a steadfast guide, offering His strength, His love, and His unwavering support. Let this knowledge fill you with courage and hope. When you face the mountains of life, look to Him, draw from His infinite strength, and move forward with confidence. For in the Lord, you have an unshakable support, and with Him, you will navigate the challenges of life not just with endurance, but with victory. Be strong in the Lord, my dear friends, for He will never fail you. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before you with a heart full of thanksgiving and praise. I acknowledge your greatness, your majesty, and your sovereignty over all creation. You are the Rock of Ages, the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Your power is unmatched, your wisdom and love are boundless. I worship you, Lord, for who you are, my fortress, my deliverer, and my strength. Lord, I give you thanks for the gift of life and for the countless blessings you have poured into my life and the lives of my loved ones. I am grateful for your mercies that are new every morning and for your grace that sustains me. 
Thank you for your unwavering presence and for walking beside me through every trial and triumph. Lord, I ask for your forgiveness for my sins, for the times I have fallen short of your glory. I also choose to forgive those who have wronged me, releasing any bitterness or resentment in my heart. Cleanse me, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Father, I stand on your promises, drawing strength from your word. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke the spirit of fear, doubt, and discouragement, binding them in the name of Jesus, and I claim faith, hope, and love in my life. Lord, empower me to be strong in you and in the power of your might. Fill me with the wisdom, courage, and strength to face life's battles, knowing that with you, victory is assured. I decree healing over my body, mind, and spirit in the name of Jesus. I pray for your healing touch upon my loved ones. Mighty God, I stand against every attack of the enemy, praying against sickness, depression, financial lack, and strife. I claim protection over myself and my loved ones, asking you to shield us from all harm and to guide our steps. Bless us, Father, with your favor and peace, and may your healing hand touch every area of our lives that needs restoration. Lord, as I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement, standing united in faith as we pray for each other. Strengthen us, Lord, to overcome every challenge with grace and to walk in your ways. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, guiding us into all truth and empowering us to live lives that honor you. Bless us, Lord, with your presence. May we experience your profound peace, joy, and love in abundance. Protect us from the snares of the enemy and let your hand be upon us for good. We declare your lordship over our lives, claiming victory over every battle, healing for every wound and sickness, and provision for every need. Let your will be done in our lives and in the lives of my loved ones, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.